Well, hi everyone, and welcome to Bio 2531 Microbiology Lecture. I wanted to uh, record this Zoom presentation in lieu of taking time out of our first day of class. Um, so just wanted to kind of go over some housekeeping items as it relates to the course, uh, which of course is spelled out in the syllabus. So I'm going to ask you to go to Blackboard. You'll see in the content folder at the very top there, the course syllabus, which I'm going to share with you right now. And I would suggest you get that out maybe, and uh, you can kind of walk through the syllabus with me as we talk a little bit about the course and some of the things to be mindful of as we uh, get through the next 15 weeks or so of the fall semester. So again, this is my curl lecture, the CRN number here, 3443. I'm Bob Ratterman. Um, I'll be with you guys again um, in lecture, and I'll probably have some of you guys in lab as well, even though um, the courses are separate. Um, some people choose to take both lecture and lab together. Others take, obviously, just lecture or just lab. Um, I think there's some benefits to doing both at the same time, because some, some of the things we talk about in lecture, we then, of course, dis describe or uh, explore in lab and vice versa. But again, it's, it's not critical that you have the lab at the same time. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I've been at JCC since uh, 1987, came right out of grad school. Um, I teach a variety of courses. The, the two main courses I teach are Anatomy and Physiology 1, the Bio 2510 course, and then the Microbiology Lecture and the Microbiology Lab. But I've taught a whole host of courses over the last 34 years. Um, uh, principles of Bio 1 and 2, A&P 1 and 2, Micro, Health Science, Human Biology. I've taught Animal Behavior. I've taught Zoology. Um, I also teach a Tropical Biology course every other spring semester. I co-teach that with uh, one of the Jamestown Biology faculty members. And of course, uh, because of COVID, unfortunately, we have not been able to travel to the tropics, to Costa Rica and Panama. Uh, we usually do that over our spring recess. Um, but I've been doing that course every other year since 2003, and it's really one of my favorite courses. Um, I live in Randolph. My wife works on the Jamestown campus. Um, my hobbies include uh, photography. Um, I like to fish. I, I fish Lake Erie quite often uh, in Chautauqua Lake. I also trout fish, fly fish. I like to hunt, um, I like to hike. I have six beehives, so I'm a beekeeper, which is a very interesting kind of hobby. And in the next week or two, as you drive to and from school, look around, you'll start to see these fields of yellow up here. That's goldenrod, which is the primary nectar source that bees and other pollinators use in the fall of the year. It's a very important source of nectar, which gets turned into honey. So uh, I'm anxiously anticipating the bloom of the goldenrod in the next week or two, which will extend into early to mid-September. Um, as I said, I live in Randolph. Um, and that's just a little bit about myself, I guess. Um, I've listed on the syllabus my uh, phone number. This calls directly to the office, which is room 220 in the Allied Health and Science Center. That's the same building that you'll be having a uh, lecture in. And right across from the lecture uh, hall or room is the biology lab. Um, the room number for the lecture is 204, Allied Health and Science Center, and the bio lab is 203. 220, my office is down the hall from those two rooms. So if you just kind of head on down the hallway, past the bio lab, past the lecture room, and on the far end, go left. There's a corridor that leads into a, a hallway where there's, I believe, um, five offices. And mine is the second from the end. So it's very easy to find. I've listed there my office hours. 
um, each full-time faculty member here at JCC has to maintain eight office hours a week. And if you have any um, uh, instructors who are adjuncts or part-timers, for every three credit hour course that they teach, they have to have one office hour a week. So look for those office hours posted in all of your syllabi that you're starting to get this week. And uh, be aware of when your instructors are available to meet with you and where, right? The other thing I was going to just quickly say while I think of it is if you have um, a desire to, uh, you know, utilize my office hours remotely via Zoom, I'm fine with that as well. But I will be in my office uh, 220 for these eight hours a week. If I'm not, I will post a note on the door telling you where I am. And um, there are usually many other additional hours throughout the week that I am in my office besides these eight. So the only day I'm really not on campus is um, Friday. So I will not be here Friday. I have obviously no office hours on Thursday or Friday. Um, but uh, if you would like to meet at a different time than those listed, just talk to me um, or feel free to stop by during those eight hours. Um, as I've mentioned, our lecture is in room 204, um, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 8.30 to 9.45. The textbook that we're going to be using this semester is Foundations in Micro by Talaro and Chess, the 11th issue, or edition rather. Um, let me uh, just uh, share another screen with you. I left my textbook at home. Um, I'm obviously in my office today. It's Monday, the 23rd. So um, I, I did pull up a photograph here of the actual text. A lot of you may already have your book, but this is what it looks like. This is the, the 11th edition. Um, and I would really uh, suggest you try to get that as soon as you can, because we're going to be getting into chapter one tomorrow on our first day of class. Now, if for some reason you don't have your textbook, um, we will have a few on reserve in the Learning Commons, which is over in the LLAC building. As you walk right into the first floor there on the left, it used to be kind of called our library, but we've now combined the library, the Learning Center, and the Accessibility Office all under one umbrella, if you will, and we call it now the Learning Commons. So if you head over there, um, you can ask for a copy of the micro textbook um, although they may have the 11th, I'm not sure, and they may even have the 10th, and either one is fine. Uh, and you can sit over there and you can at least have access to the book until yours comes in. If you have the 10th edition, you can use that edition as well for this course. There aren't many differences between the 10th and the 11th. Um, however, if there are any differences, and you're welcome to borrow my book and kind of compare and contrast if you have the 10th edition. You're still going to be responsible for any of the new information presented. But as I said, I don't think there's really a whole heck of a lot of a difference between the two. So if you can save yourself some money by using the 10th, I'm okay with that. Um, so that's the textbook that we're, we're using. Um, you should be aware of the prerequisites, and that is having had either principles of bio or anatomy and physiology one. Um, we hope you have also had college comp one, which is the English 1510 course. Uh, by the way, this 1550 is um, intro to environmental science. So that would be another uh, course that would allow you to, to transition into micro in addition to principles in AMP1. So we'll be talking about the lecture topic toward the end of our little talk here in a few minutes. So I'll hold off on that, but you will know what we're gonna be covering each week. So if you're one that likes to read ahead, um, you don't know what we're doing, so you can do that. In terms of your semester grade, um, this again is just micro lecture. So this three credit hour course um, will involve four lecture exams each of which will be worth 90 points. And as I've indicated here, the format of these 90 point lecture exams will be primarily multiple choice questions. You might see some matching, you might see some true, false and definition or even short answer. 
Um, I can guarantee you there will be some essay questions. Um, I typically uh, provide you with several of those and you have a choice of doing, you know, two out of three or, or three out of four essays. So you do have a choice of essays. Um, most of these questions will be worth two points apiece, at least the multiple choice questions. Um, same would hold true for the matching and true false and probably definition. Um, the short answer might be worth a few extra points and the essays could be worth as many as four to five to six points apiece. So I tally all of those up and those will equal 90 points. In addition to those four 90 point lecture exams, we're gonna have 10 lecture quizzes. Those will be worth five points apiece, which may not sound like many points, but um, every point counts, obviously. Um, we will be dropping the two lowest lecture quizzes. So that basically accounts for a total of 40 points, eight times five. We take those at the very beginning of class in lecture, right at 8.30. So uh, you need to make sure you are here on time because if you walk in at 8.40, um, you forfeit the right to take the lecture quiz. <clears throat> you don't get to take it. And it will be considered then a zero and be one of those two that you end up dropping at the end of the course. So please make sure you are ready to roll at 8.30. Um, whether there's a quiz or not, we want to start on time, um, but just be aware of that policy. And again, you see the types of questions that I ask there, multiple choice definition, matching short answer. This quiz that you're going to be taking uh, should take no more than five to seven to eight minutes. It should be fairly short, okay? And then finally, a 20 point instructor evaluation um, where I look at your engagement in the course. Are you asking questions? Are you paying attention? Are you, are you off looking out the window, uh, daydreaming? Um, you know, I, I, I really want your involvement. I want you, your engagement. I hope you find the material interesting. I think it's, it's quite interesting and fascinating. And again, 90% of you are taking this course because you're in the nursing program or perhaps in some pre-professional health program. So this is material that is pertinent to your career. And there's no better example of that than what we've had to live through for the past year and a half, right? the COVID epidemic. And we'll be talking about viruses in one of the chapters, and we'll be specifically discussing the types of vaccines that are being used to provide protection to people against this very virulent um, virus. And of course, now we're seeing the, the, uh, the Delta strain of the virus rearing its ugly head. We're seeing another peak in cases, um, which is very unfortunate, but we'll be talking about that. So these are things, these are topics that are pertinent to our lives, whether you're in it because you have to take the course or not, everybody I think should have some basic understanding of microbes and the importance that they play in our lives. And we often think of them as being bad or, or pathogenic and many of them are, right? But there's also a lot of beneficial microbes out there too. So I don't wanna paint a, a bleak dark picture of microbes I don't, I don't mean to do that. We just tend to focus more on that, I think, in, in our uh, everyday lives and what we see on the news or what we read. But believe you me, we would be in a sorry state without the action of many microorganisms. And we'll be talking about that in this course. So I've already mentioned the fact that we're taking those, those quizzes and the exams at the beginning of class. And so I won't uh, reiterate what I've indicated here in this paragraph. Just please make sure you're, you're here on time. Um, if you do miss a lecture exam, um, the makeup um, would be given at the end of the semester and could be an all essay makeup exam. So just be aware of that. Avoid missing the exams. That's the takeaway message there. So there we see uh, the point summary. The, four 90-point lecture exams, the 10 quizzes, of which we dropped two, 
at five points apiece and the instructor valuation. So there's a possible 420 points you could accumulate um, at the end of this course. So what I will simply do is just tally up all of your points. I will see where you fall in terms of the range. And here you see the percentage breakdowns. Um, and those, of course, correspond to a particular grade. So 90 to 100 percent of the total possible points, giving you the A, uh, 70 to 75 total possible points, or 294 to 324 points would give you a letter C grade, and so on and so forth. So 